Praise God. I'm glad to be here, and I join my voice with the rest of the church to us, bring the pastor back home quick. Amen? Tomorrow, amen. And then once he comes, send him back to Dubai for vacation. <laughs> we love him, and that's a man of God. Thank you, Sandra. And uh, he has been <laughs> fleeing for rats in Haiti. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I heard a voice, and that was Pastor Eric because of rats come in his room. So that's what it takes to serve the Lord, to go to the highways and byways, to face tough time. Um, the last song they sing resonates to my soul when it say, I am no longer a slave of fear. I am the son of God. And it is such a truth. Sometimes fear can come to paralyze us. To cripple us, and sometimes it is uh, it is one thing to talk about it, and but is it it is another thing to live it, and it's not difficult living in Haiti to shift from I am no longer slave of fear, and to to shift to another song easy. And that's the song that I would like to sing with you before I even start the message tonight. Thank you for having me. And uh, as I said in the previous service, uh, the last time I was here, I promised you that I would be working on my accent. So what you get today is the last version of my accent. I'm still working on it. I hope you understand Unless you want me to speak French or Creole. So all of us, we would be speaking in tongue today. But I'm doing my best. One day, maybe in heaven, I will speak a perfect English. But until then, just suffer with me. And uh, I'm doing my very best to speak your beautiful language. And I hope one day I will get it. But uh, living in Haiti, traveling in Haiti... Ministering in Haiti can be very challenging, very, especially these days where all hell on earth seems breaking loose on Haiti, and there is no order. Like Pastor Eric said, living in North Korea may be difficult, but at least you know there is one man in power, and you know what to do if you don't want to be in trouble. And uh, but living in Haiti where there is no order at all, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't, you don't know. And your life is can be gone in a second and at any given time. And that's what we are facing in, in, in Haiti right now. We need a lot of prayers and we continue to need your support. Um, it, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. People are dying every day. Every day, people, children, women, men, they are dying, kidnapped, burned alive, uh, tortured. And um, it is just difficult. And that's what I said. Sometimes it is easy to go from I'm no longer a slave of fear and then to slip right into fear. And sometimes. It's difficult. Pray for us. Um, I made a clear choice. Uh, I, I had and I still have the choice to be anywhere else I want to be in the world, but I choose to be in Haiti. I choose to serve the Lord in Haiti and at any cost. And sometime and most of the time, we get close to death. Here, I understand you have 911 at maybe three to five minutes away from you, maybe sometime less. In Haiti, there is no 911. You can call as long as you want, no 911. You have nothing to defend yourself. You only have God. And uh, it can be scary. Pray for me. So the Lord will strengthen me at the moment that I need it. And if I have to die, I will die. But at least I will die for something that I love. I love ministry. I love the kids at the orphanage. 
I, 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 once I was one of them. If it was not for this orphanage, I would not be here today. I would not know the Lord. I would never go to med school. But in 1998, I remember I made a clear choice, staying here or going back to Haiti to serve. The temptation was great because you can have a very nice life to be a physician here or in Canada or in London, wherever I had the choice to be. But I prefer back to Haiti to serve and to love the kids among them that I was one of them. So pray for me. I would like to sing this song with you. If you know it, you can sing with me. And this is the song that the Lord has given me for the past few weeks. And my wife said, what's in your mind? You keep singing this song all the time. But that, I said, this is the cry of my heart. And um, it goes like that. Um, precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hands. Precious Lord, lead me home. There is time in Haiti when I'm scared. And you feel helpless. And when you made the choice to live in the most dangerous area of the world. But that's where your heart leads you. And... Uh, Late at night or early in the afternoon, you have nobody to call. And the danger is getting near and near and near. And that's the song that the Lord gave me some time. Precious Lord, hold my hands. And lead me home if I have to go home. But until then, I understand it is just tough to serve the Lord sometime. And to do what he calls you to do. Tonight, this morning, I, well, I wanted to talk about a subject that is not the easiest one to talk about. And um, I was struggling to know what to talk with you today. And, uh, and the Lord put into my heart to speak about it. So I beg your pardon. I have not chose uh, the topic, but God put into my heart, maybe there is somebody here that needs to hear the word today. The question is, is there an afterlife? That is a strange topic to talk about in a Sunday morning. You do not come here to talk about that, to hear about that. The book of Job asks a question about the afterlife. Very simply, if a man dies... Will he live again? Job 14, verse 14. If a man die, will he live again? Well, being a human being, we have not been created to die. You know that. When God created us at his image and according to his resemblance, he has put in us eternity. Do you know that you have your soul that will never die? You have your spirit that will never die. Only the body will transition from one stage to another stage. So sitting here, you are an eternal being. I have news for you. You will never disappear. You will never disintegrate. And being in a place where no one will see you, you will always be there. So... In, I understand in our heart, we have this great desire to live forever because it's, that's how we have been created. 
A friend of mine, her mom has 85 years old, and she just purchased a piece of land in Haiti to build a house. Well, 85 years old, and then he, she has projects and projects, and you look at this woman, you see, she has no plan to go anywhere. <laughs> That's her heart. Asking the question is easy. More difficult is finding someone to answer the question with authority and experience. Someone who knows what it is. And I am glad tonight, uh, today, I am going to present to you someone. Jesus Christ is the only person who can speak with authority and experience concerning the afterlife. What gives him sole authority to speak about heaven is that he came from heaven. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man, John 3, 13. So Jesus knows what he's talking about because he was in heaven. He came down on earth and went to hell, death. And bring back victory. He conquered death. So we can relate to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Afterlife land is the only one way. You can only buy one way ticket for afterlife land. Have you known someone who bought a round trip ticket for afterlife? <laughs> no. You only can get a one way ticket. And it is non-refundable. You can't come back. But we know a man. Jesus is his name. He went there and come back. So we can trust what he's telling us. Are you ready to listen to what he wants to tell us this morning? Jesus is the only one person who can speak with real authority and experience concerning the afterlife. What gives him this authority is he knows what he's talking about. And I, you can bet he has been there and he can talk to you. Jesus, with his firsthand experience in heaven, present us with three basic truths about the subject of life after death. And also, he give us a way we can be certain of where we are going. So tonight, today, we're going to go over those three truths that you need to know and the way you can be certain of where you're going after life. Would you like to know that? Some people say, mm, I don't care. I'll die and, and go wherever they lead me. No, no, no. Uh, you, you, you really need to care about it because you will go somewhere. And some of the place you will not like to go there. You really need to know where you're going. So the first truth is certainly there is an afterlife. Don't let anybody fool you to tell you, oh, afterlife, you finish. You vanish. Nope. Afterlife, you are will and still alive in a different dimension. But all of us, you and I, we will be accountable for what we do here. You will not run away from it. You will be accountable. Young or old, female or male, we will be accountable for where we, for what we have been doing in this life. So be ready because you will have to answer questions. When a person dies, there are two possible destinations to which he or she can go. Only two. We don't have a first class. We don't have a main class. We don't have an economy class. In this airplane called afterlife, there is two classes, and they are both of them first class. You either in eternity first class with Christ or eternity first class with the enemy. Which one will you choose tonight? There is only one way to ensure positive experience after death. Only 
one way. And that's what we are about to talk this morning. And I hope you pay attention and do not let my accent be a distraction to you. Because we're talking about life and death here. We're talking about will thing. And I know that uh, some preachers doesn't want and doesn't like people to talk about hell. But I ask myself, if we do not talk about hell, where will they hear about hell? We cannot continue to live in denial. There is a place called hell. There is a place called heaven. And we will either go to one of them. First, Christ affirmed that there is an afterlife a number of times. For example, in an encounter with the Sadducees who believed that there was no resurrection, Jesus said about the death rising, have you not heard in the book of Moses, in the account of the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living, Mark 12, 26, 27. These people, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they were dead long time ago. And God was talking about them as if they were alive. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they, were, they are alive in a different dimension. So, what God wants us to know, according to Jesus, who... Those who died centuries before were very much alive with God at the very moment that he was talking. So, I have good news for you. You will not disappear. You will be there. And each one of us, we will be accountable for everything. And there is a verse that I like. It goes even in more details. We will be accountable for every word that we have spoken. In another passage, Jesus comforts his disciples by telling them of the afterlife and they cannot, they can look forward to being with Jesus in heaven. This is a chapter that we all know. It is in John 14. And I want you to put your eyes together and read it with me. It goes like that. John 14, verse 1 to 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that? I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be with me maybe where I am. So there is a place that Jesus himself went to prepare for you and I. And he will come back to take you and I. And there we will be with him forever. But, but make no mistakes. When we talk about eternal life, everybody will have eternal Everybody will be there. Some for eternal death and some for eternal life. But we will be there. I want you to know also that I take no pleasure to talk about hell or to talk about a place of darkness. But I have not chosen to tell you. God put into my heart to share with you the reality. The reality is you will die. I will die. We all will die. The reality that one day we will wake up and stand to make an accountability of our life. And that's why a friend of mine said it that way. Life is a gift from God. But what you do with your life is your gift to God. And what gift you're going to present to him. Because it matters. 
Jesus also speak with authority about two different and very much opposite destinies that await in the afterlife. Two places. As I said, there is not a middle place or an intermediary place. There is two places. And I met a gentleman uh, uh, before the other service, and he said, I was dead for at least one or two minutes. And I can tell you it is so true. There is two places. Luke 16, 22 and 23. Jesus tells us about a parable. The rich man and Lazarus. Jesus says, the time came when the beggar died and the angels of the Lord carried him to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. You know, the verse take time to just say the rich man died and was buried. But about, about the beggar, he said he died and he was carried by angels. Brothers and sisters, immediately you die, you will face a reality. And let me tell you, there is no way you can influence it. The only chance you have to influence it is now. But once you close your eyes, it is done. Once you close your eyes, there is no other appeal. Today you can appeal a judgment, but in heaven you won't be able to appeal any judgment. So the time is now to think about it. And then in Hades, the awaiting place, the waiting room where he was, I'm talking about the rich man, in, he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus in his side. By his side. Abraham was rejoicing in God's presence. And the rich man was already in torment. That's what the Bible says. He was in torment. So immediately you die. You're going to be in one of those places. And that's all it is about. We're here to let you know the reality. I'm not here to flatter you, to tell you the words that you want to hear. Sometimes we need to go straight to the point We someone needs to tell you the truth. I'm a physician by trade. I can tell you there is no pleasure to call a patient and to tell the patient, put order into your life within three months, within three weeks, within three years, you're going to be gone. But as a physician, I have the responsibility to tell the truth. If the prognosis is bad, I will tell you. And this is not love if I don't tell you the truth. And I say, no, I don't want to shock you. I don't want you to be offended. I don't want you to be mad. Who cares? It's about your life. And you need to hear about it. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, it is about your life. I'm telling you, it is real. I'm telling you, do not take life for granted because you will be accountable. He looked where he was. He was in torment. And there is nothing you can do because it is already, you have passed the deadline. I'm going to touch a topic now, and I don't want to, I don't want to offend people, because I know New England has a very solid Catholic background. Okay? I was Catholic too. One day, I went to mom, my mom. We were growing in abject poverty. And I was sad because we came from the Catholic Church, and I heard they pay every year some rich family pay money for a mess for their dead people. And I went to mom and said, Mom, we are in trouble because we will not have money. If you die, I will not have money to pay for you for any mess. So what we'll do? And mom think about it. And then soon after, I came to mom and said, Mom, wait a minute. Maybe we're not in that big trouble. And she said, why? I said, mom, I have heard these people 
talk about purgatory for a long time. But not even once, not even once, I heard one person have been upgraded from purgatory to heaven. So after all, it seems that it doesn't work. And I'm asking you the same question. Have you ever heard somebody being promoted from purgatory to heaven? May I have an example? For those of you, you were Catholic. And ever since you were a little boy, and now you are a grown man, have you ever heard somebody move from purgatory to heaven? It is baloney. <laughs> and you know it. This is to make you happy. There is no such thing. When you die, you're going to have to face the reality. And God doesn't want you to go to hell. As a matter of fact, he has not prepared hell for you. There is no purgatory for those who die. They go directly to their eternal destiny. Jesus Jesus talked more about the different destinies of the righteous and the wicked. You can read in Matthew 25, verse 46, or John 5, 25 to 29. I'm not making up. I am telling you what the truth is. If you want to report me to Pastor Eric so I won't come back here, you can tell. But I'm here to tell you the truth. Jesus also emphasized that what determines a person's eternal destination is whether or not you have faith in God's only son, Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, it is free. It is free. You don't have to pay for it. When you go for life insurance here, first they ask you your age. And I can tell you, I'm going to turn 57. I find out it is difficult to find life insurance at 57. Oh, man, you're 57. And you have had deep vein thrombosis. You are on Elchrist. Man, if you will have one, it will be expensive. So it's not life insurance. I have my wife calling me, Franco, you're going often to Haiti. You need a life insurance. I say, thank you, honey. That's very nice. <laughs> you need life insurance. And I said, yes. For you, it is life insurance. For me, it is death insurance. Because it will come into effect after I die. So it is death insurance for me. But nevertheless, he said, you need it. I said, yes, honey, I need it. But this life insurance that I'm talking about is the real deal. And it is free. You don't have to pay for it. They don't take in consideration your age. They don't take in consideration your past diagnosis. You can be admitted today. You don't have to live in fear, not knowing where you're going. You can know today where you're going by just signing and invite Jesus to come into your life. Jesus also wants you to know that if you have faith in him, you have a free policy forever. Is there anyone here who would have the courage to leave this place without knowing where you're going? By default, you have been registered for the place of darkness. Ever since, ever since sins come into the picture, all of us has been registered for darkness. The enemy will make sure that he brings as many as he can with him in this hellish place. But Jesus came, went to death, and conquered death, and bring back the key, and give us the opportunity not to go there. He had no pleasure that you go there. As a matter of fact, he had not created hell for you. Hell has been created for the demons and Satan himself. To go to hell, you have to make your own choice. And that's why we want you to understand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned. Already because they have not believed in the same, in the name of God's one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And that's why the greatest sin that will take you to hell, the greatest one, do you know what it is? It's not murder. It's not adultery or fornication or stealing or lying. It's the refusal of Jesus. That is the greatest sin. Because whatever you have done, the blood of Jesus is able to forgive you, to restore you. But when you reject the only one who can pardon you and you reject him, you reject life. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's the reason I'm here. So you don't go there. It's not funny. It's not nice. For those who repent of their sins and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, their afterlife will consist of eternity spent rejoicing in the Lord. For those who reject Jesus, however, the afterlife will be quite different. Jesus described their destiny as darkness. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. As the heaven sent authority on the afterlife, Jesus wants us to choose wisely. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. A few months ago, I was invited for our 30th anniversary of when we graduated from medical school. And I was in Miami. And I was glad to see all my friends. And they are successful. And they have money. But you can tell among them there was a race. Who has more money? And I came shy because I don't have much more that they have. And, uh, you know, I, but they don't want to talk about Jesus. They don't want to talk about uh, eternal. And they, 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 they belittle me and looking at me. And, Franco, are you okay? Are you okay? This gospel thing make you crazy because it's all about money, fame, Mercedes, nice house. Let me tell you, there will be, and it doesn't take a long to realize that those things does not count. Have you suffered migraine? If you have a good episode of migraine, you forget the name of your car. If you have a good headache, you forget the size of your house. And that's a wake-up call. As the heaven sent authority on the afterlife, Jesus wants us to be aware that you will have to face reality. And I'm not here to scare you to death. I'm here to tell you the reality. Speaking about life after death, there is a scientist, Canadian scientist, once said, I have only two questions to ask. One, has anyone ever defeated death? Two, did he make a way for me to do it also? And I'm asking you the question today. Has anyone defeated death? Jesus did. Did he make a way for you to do the same? Why don't you do it? Why don't you take your chance? Do it. He gives you the way. The answer to both is yes. One person has both defeated death. And provided a way for everyone who puts their trust in him to overcome it as well. No one who trusts in Jesus Christ needs to fear death. And we can rejoice in the Lord's salvation. 
And I am glad. The greatest thing that ever happened into my life is when God affranchised me, freed me from the fear of death. I went to Canada on a February 23rd. At 11.45, I thought I was going to die. And then you know what happened? Jesus gave me victory. And tell me, I, am, I took you from time and put you in eternity. I would like you to stand with me. And we're going to recite this verse together. That is the cry. And it will be on the screen. And I want you to recite it loudly with me. We're going to read it with the real American accent. Everybody needs to uh, read it as if you believe it. We'll go. One, two, three. Let's go. Where old death is your sting. You can settle your old debt right now. And you will be able to say without hesitation, I am no longer afraid. My debt is already paid. And my account with my judge is all settled. May the Lord bless you.